Hello guys. So from this session onwards, right, we'll start learning or we'll start coding a few things in R. Uh, so now we'll get into the groove of coding things in R. So before we start to learn exactly, we need to understand that every programming language will always have a few data types that it will use. Data is always collected in some form and that form is represented in a programming language. So for R or for any data collection effort, data can be majorly of two types. One is numeric, the other is character. Right? Now when we talk about numeric variables, we know that they can either be integers, they can either be non-integers, real numbers. Right? Or they can be complex numbers as well. And these three are the major that we will be looking at. So when we talk about R, right, we have to talk in terms of how we make those variables. So to make a non-integer variable, it's very easy. You just type 2.05, right? You can see once this code, once we get this code is run, the global environment will get updated now. It has x is equals to 2.05. This is obviously a non-integer data type. Similarly, if I were to make if I were to think how to make an integer variable, I will say y equals to 2. This is non-integer. Right? This should be integer because I am telling I that I have y is equals to 2. But there is no difference. How, how does R know that 2.05 and 2 are going to be different type of data? Even if we were to not say anything like y equals to 2, R stores all numbers by default in non integer type. So, actually, at the back end, y has been stored as 2.000000. The problem is each zero is taking up some amount of space. Somewhere it is taking up that space that we don't want it to take. So when we look at such types, when we want to store something as an integer specifically, we'll have to provide an L next to that number. This is going to be an integer as well. Right? So y2 is an integer whereas y is not. Similarly, we can create complex numbers as well by just typing in 2 plus 3 i or let's say 3 plus 4 i. I can also add two complex numbers in R, like I can add two proper numbers in R, 2 plus 3, 5 plus 7. Obviously, we won't be using these two types as much, uh, we won't be using complex numbers as much. What we'll be using would be integer data, okay, example would be age in years. And for non-integer data, it would be weight, something like that. So my weight would be 58.5 kg, etc. Complex numbers is something that we won't be using. So I am not giving any examples to that effect. When you look at character data, right? At times it can be unique character data. That is a name of a person. 
right example name so whenever you were to collect names you will always have different answer from a different person you don't expect a lot of people to answer the same thing or it can be an ordinal cardinal type of data essentially meaning that there are a few specified outcome let's say when we talk about gender or the past status of a person for a paper etc now we know that there are only going to be n number of answers that a person could have either passed scored or rank failed if you talk in terms of grade it can be p e f a f b etc right so we we already know what those grades are so gender would uh, be a type of such variable which can not be ordered we don't know which one is better which one is worse gender is that type there is in the past status we know that p is always better than an fa so that's the basic difference between ordinal and cardinal type of data again you won't be asked this thing by the examiner it's just that you should know what you are working with before you go into anything right so all such data types can be created in r so if i want to to create a name let's say i wanted to store a name so i can just say name equals to now any time i want to create something character i have to put it inside inverted commas a single inverted or a double inverted comma let's say name okay right so so when you look at it when i look at the value inside name with quotations it says bob here that means r knows that we are talking about a character variable and it won't allow me to do something things that are for numeric variable to that thing so it is saying non numeric argument to binary operator so you can't add a two to a name that's the only point that it is trying to make creating ordinal and cardinal data sets in r we'll learn that in future right we won't be doing it in this session along with these two major types r has a third type logical slash boolean now this is a special type that can only take answers as true or false right so let's say i'm just giving it a name esther as soon as i do that esther gets assigned value true basically it is true it can also have it could have also have been false for that matter and we are going to write esther true to be equal to now because true and false in all capitals is already known to our what it is it is not being creating an issue for us right so any time anywhere we are looking at two categories using true or false right is a better way to answer something we we'll come to this again when we are looking at how to subset a vector etc but the basic idea is that in r you can have three major data types data can either be numeric it can either be character or it can be logical numeric data type itself can be of integer type non integer whole numbers ho sakte hai complex numbers ho sakte hai the character data can be unique character data something like a name address etc it can be an ordinal or a specified type of data right and there can be a true false kind of data 
if i have to draw parallels between this and what we do in an actual life let's say you make up a google form okay to ask a few things you ask the name that becomes a unique character type right you ask the gender with a drop down list menu okay that means you a person can only select the options that you have given them an mcq would be ordinal cardinal type of data since a b c d only those four outcomes are possible you ask them the age the weight right or some rating on a scale 1 to 10 etc and then you ask them a question is global warming real state true or false they write true or false so we using that google form or that form you have collected data of all types now the question is how do you check that kind of a data matlab how do you check if something is some kind of a data let's say if i were to give you a variable called xyz how do you check if it is logical in nature right that it is logical for that we have is family of function right whenever you come across any kind of variable you want to check if it is numeric or if it is character if it is integer etc what we will be using is is family of function so these are of entire family of functions so is dot as soon as you do this you will have a lot of so is dot character means check if something is character i run this it will give you an answer true if it is character false other and then just we going to run this line of code false obviously aster is a logical variable it is not character hence we got the answer false if i were to do this is dot logical on aster the answer would be true true if it's logical false otherwise similarly you can go ahead and check is dot Uh, you can check the help section for is dot complex, or we also have functions as is dot numeric. Let's say for that we look at x. We also have is dot double, that is the non-integer data type. Similarly, you also have is dot integer. right x is not an integer so the idea is that using the is function we can convert data uh, sorry we can check if the data is of some specified type that we would have wanted it to right you do not want to see if something is integer you just see that so that when you do addition it r does not throw an error similar to this so i'll just make a note okay. is function check if the data is of certain type right uh, we have a lot of these functions we'll be looking at this functions again uh once we are done with a few more types similar to this you also have as family of function right so as family if you look as dot let's say integer again this 
this as family of function converts into the given type convert x to an integer it is basically coercing x to become an integer right similarly i can have as dot complex x so now you are looking at it uh, from the standpoint of a complex world it is showing you 2.05 plus 0 i so the as function is changing the structure of x to a complex number to an integer if i were to do character right then i am getting 2.05 inside the quotation marks meaning that it's a character variable now so as function is checks if it is of a certain type as converts it into that type so let's say as dot numeric ester ester 2 and we also have name right so as dot numeric sometimes the r won't be able to do it and it will tell you that i have not i have introduced na that is not applicable by coercion that i had to i did not know what you were asking and the na part so there are three main data types and two main families of function with respect as functions convert the data into the specified type okay three data type two families of function is checks if it is of a certain type as converts it into that certain type right so go ahead revise this try to play around with a few functions here and there just so that you can check out what happens when you do that other than that everything is fine that's it for today's lecture keep practicing if you have any doubts you can come back watch the lecture again so that those can be cleared or you can ask them on the whatsapp